Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and this is my Wyvern Flying Wing. This is the plane for those of you who are addicted to high speed flight. With a moderate power setup on a four cell battery, this plane can easily exceed 120 miles an hour. It is extremely maneuverable and flies like it's on rails. It goes without saying that these kind of speeds and this type of performance isn't for the beginner. This is an advanced pilot's airplane, so if you're not an expert or advanced level pilot, you should probably choose something slower and easier to fly. However, if you're an experienced pilot, this is the plane for you. It comes in two versions, the standard and the special edition. The difference being that the special edition comes with a much stiffer foam and some stronger spars so that the SE can take even higher speeds than the standard can. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this airplane just as I have here. And when you get out there, get ready for some serious high speed. The way to launch this airplane is to simply grab it right here and aim it about 45 or so degrees in the air, throttle up and just give it a good toss and out it will go. Center of gravity on this airplane is seven and three quarters of an inch behind the leading edge back here. So with that, let's start building the airplane. Start out this build by gluing the wing sections together. Do this by adding a heavy amount of glue to the center fuselage and then press it into the mid wing section. Work it around to be sure the glue is fully covering both sides and then pull it apart. Repeat this with both sides. You want to use a heavy amount of glue here to be sure it's fully adhered. This glue is a contact adhesive. That is, you coat both sides, then you let it cure and then push it again together later. This will make the strongest possible bond. Repeat this procedure with the wing tips of the airplane, again gluing the wing tips in instead of the center mid-wing sections. Again, a heavy amount of glue is needed to be sure it stays in strong. Work the glue together around the mid-wing section, then pull apart and repeat on the other side. You'll note here that the bevel side is aimed down. This allows the elevons to deflect properly. After 20 to 30 minutes, it's time to press the airplane back together. The glue should feel dry to the touch. If it doesn't, let it dry a little bit longer. Just don't let it set for more than about an hour. Then line the wing sections up and press together very firmly. This should grip and hold very well. You want to be sure everything is lined up before you press together. I recommend lining the tips up and then bringing the back together as I'm showing here and then pushing together with a good amount of pressure. Don't put too much pressure into it as you don't want the wing to buckle and break the glue joint, but just a good amount of pressure to be sure it's all stuck and glued together. Now you can install the spars. Line the spars up along the wing tips extending into the center section. You want them to meet approximately one half inch to one inch behind the battery bay. Make a mark at this point. Then take a straight edge and a knife and cut a line approximately one eighth of an inch deep or approximately the thickness of the spar into the foam along this area. Do this to both sides of the airplane, both the top and the bottom. Once you've cut the top, take a tape measure and measure back how far you made your first cut to where the uh, spars will meet. Do this exact same thing to the bottom side. For the central stress spar, cut the remaining spar in half, that is 24 inches long, and then move it up till it almost meets with your other spar slots. From here, mark each side. It should extend about three inches into the wingtip section. Then, using a straight edge, make a line between these two marks. Then take your knife and cut approximately one eighth to three sixteenths of an inch deep, or just a little bit deeper than the spar is thick, into the foam between these two marks. 
Repeat this exact procedure on the opposite side, being sure the spars line up over top of one another. Before installing the spars, you want to open up your cuts. You can drag the head of a wide pen or marker cap or other device, or you can use a device like I'm using, which is made from a soldering gun and a simple piece of metal wire bent between the two terminals. Current runs through the metal and heats it up and melts the foam away at the sides. Again, you don't want to go super deep, but this works open up the cuts to make sure that the spars don't warp the foam. This step isn't completely necessary, but definitely makes the airplane much stronger in the event of a hard crash. And thus, this extra spar is not included in the standard kit. You want to cut one spar into four 12-inch sections and then place them along the mid-wing section so that they extend into the center blunt section. What this does is it keeps the airplane from cracking apart in the event the plane is nosed in high speed. They don't really improve the flight characteristics at all, but more prevent damage in the event of a hard crash. You'll want to do this on both the top side and the bottom side of the airplane for maximum strength. Now it's time to glue in your spars. Take the glue and add a copious amount of adhesive into each slot. You'll want to fill the slots almost completely up with glue and then at the end wipe away any excess as these spars are the only thing that are going to keep the airplane from breaking up at excessively high speeds that this thing is designed to fly for. Fill all of the tracks in with glue at first and then simply install your spars. They should snap into place and be fairly secure. For the longer spars, you can bend them like I'm showing here and embed them down into the foam. Whatever you do, do not run your fingers down the fiberglass spar, otherwise you will get the fiberglass into your fingers and it will give you an itch that you'll have for weeks. Repeat this process on the top and the bottom sides. Use the laminating film included in the kit to cover the airplane. You want the shiny side to face upward as the dull side is the adhesive. Start in the middle of the airplane and work your way to the edge. As you can see, I'm using my hand here to stretch the film as much as possible to eliminate any wrinkles. Use a good amount of pressure to be sure everything is bonded. I recommend doing this after letting the spars dry for about two hours to make sure the glue cures fully. The elevons on this airplane are simply laminated into place. Cut a spare piece of laminate film at least four times as deep as the elevon is wide and then simply attach it to the airplane like I'm showing here. I usually like to laminate the film to the elevon first, then to the airplane to be sure I make a good hinge. Once you've got the top side done, flip up the elevon like I'm showing here and then coat all the way down into the crack to make a seam. This will make a very, very strong and stiff joint that will work as a great control surface. Once done, simply trim off all of the excess with a knife. Here's a little bit more detail about how I'm making the underside of the hinge. As you can see, I'm pulling the laminate up around the backside of the airplane and then using all of the surface to adhere it. The next step is to install the servos. I'm installing my servo four inches in and three inches back from the wing section here. You don't want the servo to be mounted at the edge of the wing as very high speeds could cause it to oscillate. You really want the linkage to be as close to the center as of the elevon as possible. Using the servo as a jig, simply trace out its contour and cut into the wing. You can either cut all the way through the airplane with a knife and punch out the plug, or you can just use the hot work tool that I made from the soldering gun that I used earlier to cut out all the spar tracks. You'll want to make this hole just a little bit tight to make sure there is no wobble in the servo. Once the plug is removed, simply add glue to the servo and stick it in place. Once a servo is installed, you'll need to cut a track for the wire. The wire track is simply dug with a knife and then using a pen or pencil, open up the track and bury the wire in place.
The control horn should be mounted close to the center of the elevon section. I'm moving out 5 inches here, even though the elevon's 11 inches long, because that's close enough. Use the control horn as a jig, and then use either a sharp tip point or just a drill bit, and drill through the elevon about an eighth of an inch back from the hinge. The locking plate on the back is what secures it to the elevon. So remove it, then put two screws down through the holes, press through the holes you just drilled, and then screw on the locking plate into the back until it's secure. You don't want to over tighten this as you can damage the balsa wood, but just make sure it's nice and snug. The linkage is made from two clevises and a section of threaded rod. Simply thread the threaded rod into a clevis about three or four turns then hook the clevis into either your servo or your control horn. Then, using the other clevis as a jig, cut off any remaining threaded rod, making sure you can get at least three threads into the clevis. Adjust the length of your linkage arm to be sure that the elevon is straight. You want the elevon to have about 1 16th of an inch of upward reflex when the servo is centered. The stabilizers on the aircraft are completely optional. They are installed one half inch inside the midwing section of the airplane. I'm using a straight edge as it's much easier to keep a straight line, and I'm using the seam to line everything up. The top of the stabilizer is a nice straight edge as well, so I'm simply folding it over the aircraft and using it to make a straight line. I'll repeat this process on the bottom side and make sure that both lines connect and that they are the same distance away from the seam. The seam is in fact parallel with the airplane, so you can use that seam to make this line. Once done, you'll need to cut out this line with a knife. You want to cut approximately 1 8 of an inch into the foam. Be sure not to cut through your servo wire when you do this. Make the cut around the front and all the way to the back. The stabilizers should extend to right where the hinge is on the elephants. Once you have cut your slot, dry fit your stabilizer into place into the slot, sliding it all the way to the back where it stops. Then pull the stabilizer to the side and mark out where the spars and the servo wires cross underneath the stabilizer. Do this for both the top and the bottom. With a pair of diagonals or even a pair of sharp scissors, Cut out a notch where each of these marks on your stabilizers are. This will allow the spars to pass through these sections. Don't worry about cutting too much out. Cutting out a little bit more is just fine. There's plenty of bite to the ABS that will keep the stabilizer in place. Once the notches are cut out, once again dry fit the stabilizer to the airplane to verify that it's going to fit in place. Once you verify that it's fit in, fill the gap with glue, slide the stabilizer into place, and let dry overnight. I find the best place for the speed control is in between the two spars, just behind the battery bay. For aerodynamics sake, I am going to embed the speed control into the foam. To do that, I'm cutting away a section big enough to fit the speed control into. Then I'm using my hot work tool to gate gouge out a section of foam such that I can embed the speed control into. Of course, you can happily dig this out with a screwdriver, it's just this tool makes it a lot easier. To mount the camera, I'm simply cutting a hole in the contour of the camera and then gouging out the foam and embedding the camera into the hole that I'm cutting here. Once the hole is cut, I'm simply gluing the camera into place with a good amount of glue, well, at least enough to hold it. Then I'm using a small section of the foam that I gouged out to jam the, the camera mount in place. As you can see, I cut a slit into the battery bay so that the wire can go down along the bottom of the battery bay and into the electronics chamber. 
For batteries on this aircraft, I'm using two four cell 1900 milliamp hour batteries shoved all the way up in the nose for the best center of gravity. What I'm doing is simply marking out an area for two Velcro straps to come over the battery and lock it down in place. To install the straps, I simply wrap them around the front end of a screwdriver or a pen or other relatively pointed device and push them through the frame out the other side. I'm using two straps as I don't think one is sufficient to hold the batteries in place. Once installed, I'm simply test fitting the batteries and then trimming off any excess of the Velcro strap with a pair of scissors. For control, I'm using a 433 MHz receiver. This is a long range receiver because at 120 miles an hour, it only takes 30 seconds to get out past a mile, which is about the range of most 2.4 GHz control systems. To install, I'm simply embedding it partway down the mid-wing section of the airplane. Again, I'm using my hot rework tool here to cut a chamber. Again, it's nothing more than a soldering gun with a piece of metal in a loop approximately the width of the receiver. To mount the motor, I'm simply removing the laminate from underneath where I'm going to mount my foam block as the foam to foam contact with glue in between is a lot stronger than laminate, even though the laminate is obviously pulling away the foam. Then a polycarbonate piece will go on either side of this foam block and they will get glued in place. Add a good amount of glue to the block and then touch one of the polycarbonate pieces to either side of this, lining the bottom up with the bottom of the foam block. From there, glue this assembly onto the area where you cut out on the airplane, being sure that the motor is mounted straight. When mounted, the motor should have a bit of down thrust. This will keep the nose from diving when powering up the motor on the airplane. The final thing to do is simply glue on the winglets. Add a good amount of glue to the wing to make sure that the winglet will stick. Press it in place, work it around, remove it. Then in about 15 minutes, press it back in place and it will be locked in for good. The airplane is now ready to fly. Go out, enjoy, and hang on tight. I might be crazy and keep them flying.